are here. Okay, recording the class already. So today we are introducing our English language and pronunciation short course, and this is aimed for 12th grade students. Uh, we mentioned that the idea is to provide insight to students about the origin of English language and studying British pronunciation, contrasting it with the American pronunciation to improve clarity and fluency. Okay, so also we decided that we're going to have a different table of contents uh, this week. We're going to have history, accents and dialects, and also some short tips for uh, the British pronunciation. We have to begin with the origin of the language, and this started when some Germanic tribes invaded England. Okay, we're talking about the 5th century AD. Okay, so we're talking about long 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 ago okay these tribes they lived okay uh, i mentioned they're uh, germanic so they lived around uh, what we have here denmark okay and they were called the jutes the angles and the saxons uh, and these tribes were called germanic because they uh, lived in the area called germania so they share kind of some similarities in language and in the fifth century they invited the island okay in the island there were people okay there were people living in there and these people were called the celtic people the celtic or celtas as we know them in spanish uh, let me get the spotlight okay the celtics okay they had their own language okay they spoke celt and they fought against these invaders, but uh, they were pushed back. So they resided in the in the in the areas of Wales, Gales, okay, in the areas of Scotland, okay, and in the areas of Ireland. So the Angles, okay, and the Saxons and the others, they stayed in the area of England, of England, okay, as it was called. So that's why English or English uh derived from this area okay so now we know that we had some invaders that came to the island on the fifth century okay the jutes the angles and the saxons okay then the angles and the saxons will come and they make a big group called the anglo-saxons okay and they will live in there and the jutes will try to live around uh they will mix with people from the Celts, uh, the up uh, upstate of scotland okay and the celts will remain in wales and some others will escape to the isle of man and also some others will escape to ireland okay then what we have is that on the 55 bc or before christ we have our friends from mm -hmm. good look we have the Romans, okay? So in this case, the Romans also came to the island and they fought against the Anglo-Saxons. Um, obviously the Anglo-Saxons were only tribes and they lived around, they weren't a country. So the Anglo-Saxons lived there and there and there, and also around there, right? And obviously the Romans were a military machine and they just came in uh, to the area of, um, we're talking about Kent, the area of Kent. So they came here with Julius Caesar on the 55 BC. And well, they were very successful, but then they had to go back. They went back to the Gallia again to crush a rebellion. Okay. So uh, that was the first incursion of the Romans to the island. Uh, then on 53, 53 AD, so that would be after Christ or Anno Domini, or Anno Domini. Um, we have the uh, the Romans coming again, and now they come with a military massive force. Okay, so what they do is they obviously defeat these Anglo-Saxons uh, and these little kingdoms that we had, and the Romans establish. Okay, they establish in Britain. And they start controlling all the areas okay in this place so now the britain is on the uh, military dominion of the romans obviously now uh, they started doing what they do the best and that is to found cities okay so the romans started founding cities 
and they also were excellent builders. Builders. So one of the first things they did, they did was to found the city of Londinium. So Londinium is a Roman city, which will become the capital of the realm. Um, also, they started founding other cities, like for example, the Man Manchester, okay, and all the Chester cities also belong to the Roman Empire, okay. Uh, also, we have the city of Bath, which is around here, and other British, other Roman cities. In this time, obviously, people uh, from the government, uh, the Romans spoke Latin, okay, so little by little the proto language of the English uh, starting having Roman influence. Okay, so that's why some words like, for example, victory or victory uh, comes from the Latin and we have the same thing in Spanish, Victoria. And that's why because they have a Latin root. Okay, they have a Latin origin. Uh, there are many words that you also in classes say, oh, that's similar to Spanish. Okay, and that's because the, the Romans lived in England for a long time. Okay, so what they have also, uh, they built a wall here, and this is called the Adrian Wall, named after the Emperor Adrian or Adrian. Okay, so they built this wall uh, to block the people from the north to come down and invade. Okay, because they were so annoying, they came and burned things. Okay, etc. Uh, that would be the Roman conquest. Then, after the empire was collapsing, uh, they decided to go away. They said, okay, uh, let's better save our empire, and then went back and fought in Rome, and that's when we hope for, when we have the fall of the Roman Empire. So now, what we have is a new kind of people. We have people that, uh, they have cities, big cities, we have Londinium, right? We have Manchester, and we have other cities around. We have York as well, and we have Kent. So we have different cities, and we have roads, and we have buildings. So it's a new life for these people, okay? And obviously, some few Romans stay, mainly old people and people who couldn't fight, and they stayed and mixed with the uh, old people that lived there, the Anglo-Saxons. So now we go back to our presentation. That was the middle part of it when we have the Romans in it. Okay, we're gonna go back now. All right, so what we have then is the start of the language. Uh, uh, this is divided in three different timelines. We have um, the Old English from 40, from 450. To 11 AD. And so what we have is these Germanic tribes, the Jutes, the Anglo Saxons, they spoke quite similar, okay, Germanic. And they, what they spoke was a very like old version of English, okay. So it's, it was very, very different from what we have today. And also, um, what they have, we, we still have some words from the old English in the modern English. Uh, words like, for example, strong water and those things come from the old English. Uh, they were, and the English wasn't very formal, okay? So it wasn't spoke anywhere else but on the island. So what they have is like a record from the old English. And we have the first poem written in English. This poem is really big and it's called Beowulf. Beowulf is a famous, famous, famous poem. It was written in Old English and is recorded as the first, the first uh, written paper in English. <clears throat> uh, this book, you can have it. Uh, actually, is also we have a movie. You can have a look at it. It's very nice. So Old English finishes around the 11 AD. And then we continue with the Middle English. So what happens now is a bit different. <clears throat> Uh, for the people who, for example, love the Vikings, they know people that saw the Vikings is that uh, some some Vikings they went on to live at the northern France, and these Vikings uh, founded the the Duke of Normandy. Okay, so Normandy is a region at the north of 
of France. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. So we have Normandy here. It should be something like this. So we have Normandy here, and these people, they spoke French, okay? And these people were Vikings, right? And then they kind of settled down and they started living like the French way, okay? And we had a, a person here called William. Then this person is really important for English history uh, and it's called William the Conqueror. What happens here is that this young man, William the Conqueror, is the Duke of Normandy, it's very important, and, and he decided to invade, to invade the island. And this happens on the 1066, uh, okay? And he brought with it, obviously, when he invaded, he won, okay? He won, so he conquered the island of Britain. So he came with French, okay? In Normandy, he spoke French. And now he declared himself king of Britain and France. So the thing was that in this period, obviously, people, like regular people, working people, peasants and merchants, people who were on the streets, they spoke hmm, English, okay? They spoke something similar to English. Uh, and the people who came to rule the island were speaking French, okay? So during this time, um, uh, on the upper class, they spoke French. Uh, in the church, they spoke Latin and the regular people in the streets, they spoke English, okay? Uh, also, around this time, uh, there's the time of the famous writer, uh, Geoffrey Chaucer. Referee Geoffrey Chaucer was poet and writer, and he published the first, the first English book, okay, in this case, uh, full of stories, and is also a remarkable achievement for the language in that time. Uh, this English, the type of English, Middle English, uh, shares some similarities to the one we have now, obviously. Um, there are some things that have been changing. So what we have now is from the 1500s to the 1800s, uh, it's called the early modern English, and we can see that it's been uh, affected or influenced a lot by writers like Shakespeare, they added a lot of new words, and also inventions famous like the printing press, okay, and also some dictionaries that started appearing, okay. Uh, also, there is this very big event called the Great Vowel Ship, in which the pronunciation of words changed. We're going to have a look at that later, not today, because it's a big thing. And in this case, uh, we have the first English dictionary. Okay, so this was a big thing because now people have had like a similar, uh, they had a book in which they can contrast words and if they were correct or not. And this was done on the 1604. Uh, the original Hamlet was written in early modern English. <clears throat> so if you're a big fan of, of Shakespeare, it's in this time that he started contributing to the English language. And what we have now and later is late modern English, which is still up to now. And obviously, uh, it became popular and used around the world because of the Industrial Revolution, technology, internet, and also because of the British Empire, of course. Uh, it covered uh, a lot of earth, uh, a lot of land in the planet, okay, of the, of the past. And also, other countries adopted English as the first language. So what we have is a kind of new, very different from the old one type of English influenced by Latin, influenced by French, and influenced also by Germanic things. Okay, so what we have now is that also, now that comes to the result of varieties of English. So we know that we have different varieties of English, and uh, what we have is that from the 1600s, we had a colonization of North America, and obviously, they kind of separated, okay? They, we have the American English and we have the British English. The people who were originally in America were British, of course, but due to the distance and due to the isolation, um, both countries developed in this different way and so did the language. Americans, on their way, they had influence by the Spanish. Uh, we have Mexicans, we are down there. Okay, so they received a lot of influence by them. 
also a lot of influenced by the slave trade or West African words by the slave that came to work in America. Okay, so it, it, it saw itself affected by or influenced by a lot of people. So that's why kind of American English is a bit different from British English in a way. Now, the, the variety that's spoken way more in the world is the American English <clears throat> because of the influence of America or the United States. Obviously, it's due to cinema, television, music, and also the internet. And also we have to consider that we have different varieties of English. In this case, uh, we have Australian English, New Zealand English, Canadian, South African, Indian, Caribbean English as well, British English too. Um, we're going to enter a different path now and is to understand, first of all, differences between language, dialect and accent. When we're talking about language and dialect, it's quite difficult to have like a, like a very, very great definition, um, making a huge difference between them. But what we can have is like somehow a language is way bigger than a dialect. A dialect is a small thing, okay, usually uh, spoken locally. And if that spoken locally language becomes bigger, okay, with set of rules and with a book, with a dictionary and many, many other things and spoken by lots of people, then becomes a language. So what we have here is that um, dialects, okay, are spoken mainly. So some people may say that, that dialects are mainly spoken. There are not written rules, okay. Uh, whereas language includes both written and spoken aspects. Okay, so in this case, mm, we can understand that languages are bigger, bigger than dialects. We can maybe understand that dialects are local things and language are international big things. It's very different, for example, to say Spanish, okay, and also we can speak about uh, a dialect in a way that we can say, for example, Chilenisms. Chilenisms are a bit of a dialect, it's a bit different from, is within the area of Spanish, but changes a lot. Um, okay, here we have another example. Okay, so we have the language is considered the ideal form of way to talk and write. So that would be like a standard Spanish as we have in our country. And a dialect is a theory in a deviation away from the ideal. So it changes a lot. Uh, you can still understand, but it's n you wouldn't write it on paper. Okay, you wouldn't write it on paper like a formal thing. And we have here examples like Black English and Southern English, like a bit difficult to understand. We can have here, for example, uh, dialects. We can have uh, uh, how people in the North speak, how people in the South of Chile speak. We have uh, also variations like Koa and other things. And when we speak about accents and dialects, it's very important to mention the same. Uh, an accent and how people pronounce words, okay? So how they pronounce them, how they say the words. Uh, and a dialect is everything, okay? So everything that is <clears throat> the words itself, how, how people speak, <clears throat> should be the accent. So, for example, we can have uh, a dialect, it's a variation of Spanish, okay, we can have, for example, Argentinian, and, and the accent, the Argentinian accent is finally how they pronounce the words, okay, very differently from Chilean Spanish. Um, also, a dialect includes pronunciation, grammar, and things, so uh, if we compare them, like a, like a big thing, we have uh, language is a big thing, language should be this one then we have dialects and inside we have the accent okay the accent language is everything then we have dialects a bit smaller and usually not written formally but mainly spoken and then what we have then is the accent is how the pronunciation works and talking about pronunciation that's our goal now we're going to move now to different aspects okay and what we will be studying is british pronunciation and the contrast with the american pronunciation and also a bit of a cultural thing is a different 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 accents or variational accents that we have in the uk 
So here we have a um, bit of a thing, a map of the United Kingdom and the different varieties we have in them. Obviously, um, you can't see the map very well. There are many things here in different colors, but just to mention oh, some of the things that we're gonna study. I'm gonna start here by the area of the big city of London, okay, and other big cities on the south of England. We're gonna have a look at the Cockney accent, okay? We're gonna have a look at the Cockney accent, okay? We have other here, and okay, we're gonna have a look. Um, it should be in the area of the north, okay, and the area to north. We're gonna have a look at the Mancunian accent, which is the un, uh, the accent of Manchester, and also we're gonna have a look to Scouse, which is the accent of Liverpool, and then uh, we're gonna have also a look to Yorkshire or Geordie accent. And if it's possible, also we're going to have a look at the Midlands and that's to say the Broomy accent, which corresponds to the area of Birmingham. Okay. And just overall, we're going to have a look at Irish and also Scottish and the variations and Wales too. Okay. Uh, because of time, because of uh, extent, we're just going to focus on the most relevant ones. Okay. Which are I repeat again, Scottish accent, Irish, way, uh, Gael, uh, Welsh, sorry, Welsh, also um, uh, Geordie or Yorkshire, Scouse or from Liverpool, Mancunian or Manchester, Broomy from Birmingham, and finally Cockney, which is very, very entertaining to study. Uh, and this one is from the area of London, Cockney accent. Uh, if you have a look or if you ever watched uh, that TV show, um, um, Picky Blinders, um, you can see some of the Cockney in there. All right, let's carry on. Okay, now we are into brass tags, okay? Question people, uh, do we have any doubts? Do we have any questions? Do we have anything that you would like to see? Or that would you like me to repeat? Hello? People? No, por lo menos yo teacher no tengo ninguna Okay, okay. Very good. Okay. So now what we're gonna have is practice, okay? So my recommendation is to be focused because we're gonna, uh, today we're gonna have a look at the phonemic the phonemic chart, which is very important for people who study English and they would like to improve their pronunciation. Also, now, also some general aspects of British pronunciation, just general, because we're going to enter to specifics in the next couple of classes. So, first of all, uh, mention the phonetic or the phonemic chart. What we have here is the English sounds, okay? And the English sounds, uh, we have, it's a, they're a bit different from Spanish ones, okay. <clears throat> uh, these are not, this is not the alphabet, by the way, these are the sounds, okay. So we can have, or just to mention to you, we have different categories, okay. We have vowels and we have consonants, and also we have what we call diphthongs or diphthongos. We have them in Spanish too. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, and 12 vowel sounds. Okay, 12 vowel sounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight diphthongs. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have 24 consonant sounds. Okay, we have 24 consonant sounds. These are sounds, okay? I repeat that. And why do we learn them? If we want to improve our pronunciation, we have to know how they work. Today, we're gonna focus on some of them, okay? It will be very ambitious and we focus on all of them because we don't have time, but we will in classes, okay? So we're gonna focus on some vowels today and we're gonna focus on some diphthongs. Uh, which ones we're gonna focus today? Uh, this one, 
This one. This one. Deep thumb. This one. This one. Uh, I'm just going to go and give you a short look of how they sound. Okay. What we have here is E. When we have two dots, it means that is long. Okay. Is a long sound. So this is E, like in sheep, eagle, field. No puntitos or no dots. Okay. And no columns. So this is E. Ship, busy, started, E. Okay. This is U. Good, ooh, good, put, should. This is long. Moon, grew, through. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, eh, bed, dead, said. Easy. Then we have a. Eh. Uh, this is about, police, the, a. Eh. Then we have a, eh, which is bird, heard, work. Then we have all, this is all, very deep and long. So we have door, walk, soul. Then we have air, que es como una a -E, apple, cat, mat. Then we have a, the masra, like up, money, cut. Then we have a, which is a deep a, car, bath, safari in the case of British pronunciation, and then we have oh, okay, like not, what, because. And also we have consonant sounds like P, right, pen, bowl, table, dog, ch chips. Aquí está la diferencia entre nosotros, Chilean Spanish, and I mean Spanish and also English, is that we have two sounds, we have uh, sh, so we have chips, picture, itch, and we have jam, danger, fudge, and we have key, car, look, and we have the good sound like green, hug, lig, then we have the sound like fire, loft, phone, then we have the V sound like in video, like in move, like in off. If you can see here, we have an F, so this is not the alphabet. I repeat, these are sounds, so this is off, off, sounds like a V. Then we have the sound, okay, like in thick, like in healthy, like in teeth. Then we have the sound th, like in mother, like in this, like in with. Then we have the sound s, like in see, like in city, like in notice. Then we have the sound z, like in zebra, like in cozy, like in has. Then we have the sound sh, like in shop, like in nation, special. Then we have the sound z, television, visual, leisure. Sorry, I can't see well. Okay, then we have m, mm, man, tummy, lamb. Then we have n, mm, no, Funny knife. Look at that knife. Todo lo que decían alguna vez, knife. Aquí está el, el medio del asunto. This knife is an N. The sound N, mm, sing, uncle, angry. Mm. The sound IA, me encanta este. Este hace la diferencia entre decir yes y decir yes. IA, yeah. yes, onion, view, IA. Yeah. L, light, smelly, feel, the sound er, right, very, wrong, er, wrong. The sound what, like in when, like in where, one. And finally, the sound up, oh, which is house, and the sound, sorry, the sounds like in house, hungry, and who. I repeat. These are sounds. These are not the alphabet. <laughs> and finally, we have diphthongs like in here, Korea, here. We have this diphthong A, like in train, say, and play. Diphthong what, like your, sure, 
tourist, dip some oil, like in boy, point, oil, dip some o, like in coat, low, note, este es mi favorito, dip some air, like in hair, careful, there, dip some I, like a buy, high, fine, and dip an out, like a now, out, or house. All right. In conclusion, we can say that this is the phonemic chart. Okay. And what we have here are 12 vowel sounds, 24 consonant sounds, and we have eight diphthongs. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yes or no? Questions? Questions? Mm, no, teacher. Okay. So why is this important? Let me show you this. Why is this important? Well, for people who study English and people who also are interested, uh, let me go to the conversation. And we have a word there already, which is legit. Okay, so what we have here, if I zoom it up, usually I have word, then I have what part of the speech is, is an adjective, because it comes after the verb, so we can say that's legit. Then we have the pronunciation in the UK, and then we have pronunciation in the US. What we have here are the symbols I just showed you, okay? And the symbols are the pronunciation, okay? These symbols are called phonemic phonemic symbol um, and what we hear is how you pronounce the words so we have le, uh, this is the stress acá está el acento que no es gráfico en inglés no es gráfico pero cuando hacemos eh, la escritura o la transcripción en fonemas se pone so it's legit in the UK English legit well this is as well and then we have the sounds j Jet, legit. This is only nerd stuff, okay? Uh, and you can see how you pronounce this thing, legit. Obviously, this thing is connected to the phonemic chart I just showed you. You can see the sounds here. Like, let's go back. Okay, so we were, we had the sound L, uh, which is down here. Uh, come on, we have the sounds here. We have L. Le, and then we have stress or tilde or acento and we have the jit j uh, the jam the jit una, una e, legit una sonido te al final, legit okay let's go now to some practice uh, let's see let me see the time oh we get time okay so what we're going to practice today is uh different sounds okay the sounds that we're going to practice now are Sounds o, o, ia, e, and also where. Okay. Uh, let me see. Mm. Let me see you people. Mr. Sevalos. Um, Sevalitos, are you there? Uh -huh. Okay, folks, can you go and have a try with this? Can you pronounce this word, please? I will try. Art. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to pronounce heart very good. Well, so. No worries. Heart. No. I don't remember. Car. Okay, thank you. Then we have, uh, let's go with Mr. Gerard. You don't have a microphone, right? Let's go with Fiorella. Fiorella, can you continue with these three, please? Acá no hay malo ni bueno. Estamos revisando. Fiorella, are you there? <laughs> Fiorella, not here, it seems. Um, let's continue. Fernandilla, are you there? Sí. Continue with these three. Dark, hard, class. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
And then let's go with Dania. Dania, can you do this for all, please? Two. Okay. Glass, bath, ask, task. Uh, okay, goody, 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 goody. We're going to focus on the first sound then, okay? And this first sound, uh, we're talking about uh, some general tips for British pronunciation. Of course, if you like more the American pronunciation, it's very important that you compare and then you can choose, okay? And if you always prefer the American pronunciation, that's totally fine. And this is a good idea to study one to contrast. Okay, so you have double knowledge and then you can make a wide choice, okay? So the first sound that we just checked is the following is the R sound, okay? This is a very deep R, okay? Um, some American people, okay, and this is a big difference. Uh, American people, they have a rhotic R. They mean that they pronounce R before a vowel sound, okay? So American people pronounce usually before uh, R sound, I mean, there are sounds, okay? And I don't have any other. But British English, British English is not rot rotic, okay? It's not rotic, so the R is not pronounced. So what we should have just in British English should be art, no R, because in the British pronunciation, when we have a vowel in R, R is not pronounced because it's British is not rhotic. Whereas in American English, we will have art, uh, art, art, art. And also we have heart, we have heart, we have car, and we have car. We have dark, and we have dark. We have heart, and then we have hard. Can you notice the difference, people? People. T. Okay. What we have also is when we have a, a vowel, usually A, and we have double S. American English would do A, like class, like glass, like bath, like ask, like task. Whereas British English we would use this symbol, which is R. And they will say class, they will say glass, they will say bath, they will say ask, and also task. That's the first sound, okay? Which is R. We can find them, I repeat, when we have vowel sound before an R. Like in this one too, or we can find them when we have double S or when we have a, a vowel before a TH, okay? or I mentioned the S already, okay. Next sound. is the sound O, okay? Sound O. And this sound is the following. As we have double dot here, uh, we can see that this sound is deep. So it's long, it's closed and deep O sound, okay? And it's rounded, so we need to kind of make the, the mouth like round, like oh. So let's have a go, Nicole. Nicole, how would you pronounce this script? Nicole? Ay, no sé pronunciar. No, como sea, si estamos aprendiendo. Oh, word. Uh -huh. okay. Let's continue with uh, Cody. Cody, can you do this three, please? Cody? No, Cody? Okay, Mr. Sebastian Capos. La cuatro y cinco seis. Yes, it's in red. Yeah, yeah uh, four, four, horse, 
Yeah, so. Uh -huh. Thank you. And then we have Mr. Martuco. This last four, please. Martuco. You then. No, Martuco is out of game. Uh, let's go, Pia. Pia. Can you do this this fall, please? Mm, yeah. A ver. Tag. Mm -hmm. Bag. Cag. Wal. All right. Oh, wal. Let's see. So some of the differences that we can find here with this uh, vowel sound, or, is that, again, we have an R, so Americans would do or, and if we follow this sound, or, should be or, like in British, or, he says more, no se pronuncia la R, more, uh, war, <laughs> for, horse, Thought, taught, bought, caught, walk. Obviously, if it's American, it's, it's not actually or, it's or, like softer, more, war, for, horse, taught, bought, caught, and walk. Uh, it's a bit softer, that's to say. Um, Martugo, do you come back? Hola. Ah, Martugo, volviste. Ok. Sí, sí, que me da no. Martugo, con lo dicho recién, ¿podrías intentarlo con pronunciación británica? Ocupando el sonido O, like O, Mo, Fo, ok. Yes. Host, ok. Es host, ¿cierto? Uh, if it is British, no R. Yeah. Horse. Yes. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. uh, vale. Después, no, no, con lo que vamos a el otro. Se pronuncia igual que el de arriba, ¿no? Uh, este es y este es t. Entonces este es este thought y este mm -hmm. thought. Ah, ya. Yeah. So. ¿O no? Bueno. Uh -huh. Yes. Después, bo, bo, co. Uh, yes, la T va a sonar bien así. Ya. Yeah. Both, cos, cos. Que cuesta. <laughs> Pero esta es T así. Ahí te para. ¿Cachai? Si es que haces. Sigue. Se tiene que parar. Both, yes. cos. Uh -huh. Y walked. Okay, nice. So this is the other phoneme O. Oh, ok. It's deep. It's uh, rounded, okay, it's, it's long, like war. Remember, British pronunciation, no R, American, yes, because it's rhotic. Mm, what we're going to continue is, and we have time, is the vowel sound, uh, okay? Hi, teacher, ¿se puede volver por fin y pronunciar la nueve? Number nine. In Britain. Yes, this is caught. I. Would you would you like to give it a try, Fernandina? How would you pronounce it? Caught. Yes. Wow. Okay. And the difference between these two? Yep. Uh huh. What about number six? Yes. Fernandina? Thought. Uh -huh. Thought. Uh huh. Okay. So that's the difference. The difference was between the first sound. They sound very similar, but it's here. This is sound. And this is sound t. Okay, so that was the difference. Uh, yes, and all of them share the same thing. It's a sound o, oh, okay, o, oh, which is very deep, mm, classical British, like walk. Would you would you like to go for a walk? Oh, would you like to go for a walk? It's different. Next phoneme is mm, the lazy one, okay, and this one is called uh. Okay, so what we have here, uh, this is again, we're going to find some words with r, like in like in here so american pronunciation would be different okay 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 uh i'm gonna give it a try and then i'll ask you to repeat so uh, i'm gonna separate them in threes again 
this is the lazy sound okay that's how they call them because the only thing you need to do is uh. that's the only thing you need to do oh sorry i'm going to include this one too okay so these are the patterns where uh, this is a sound uh, okay uh, where work bird martuba try uh. Eh, a ver. Sound uh. Eh, ¿Puedo repetir lo que...? Yes, of course, of course. Yes. Uh, where, where, yeah. but... Yeah. Where, uh -huh. work, work, uh -huh. uh, bird. Uh -huh. Yes, it's uh, yes. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hubo algo de R retórica, lo cual puede ser parte de tu acento y de tu preferencia. Yeah. Uh, American should be where, yes. Where, we where, or oh, we work. Where, er, er, work. Oh, oh, look at the nice bird. Bird, suena siempre, está ahí, er, er. In British sound, British English, we, people eliminate that R, okay? But yes, nice, Martuco. Uh, let's continue with... Me siento 10% más... <laughs> más... <laughs> let's continue with... Um, Cata Rojas, are you there? Eh, sí. Ya, yeah, okay. No siento un temor a exagerar, ¿ya? Yeah? Así que vamos otra vez. Ya, yeah, Cata Rojas. The words, the words are... Girl, world, warm. Mm, yeah, I get wins. Uh, yeah. um, yeah, girl, yeah. world, mm -hmm. warm. Really good, really good. Yeah, really, really good. This uh, the uh, sound is really uh, okay. Very, very lazy. Uh, Martina, ¿te animas, Martina? La Marti. Tana Martina. Eh, Francisca. José. Ah, te va. Eh, es que algunas veces yo, al pronunciar una palabra que viene como un TH, algunas veces me enredo o se me hace como complicado, no sé por qué. Ejemplo. ¿Y cómo se pronunciaría eso? Así como el, el TOW. Como las palabras, sí, las palabras que había pronunciado anteriormente. Ah, ya. Yeah, okay. Como un TH. Ya, yeah, entiendo. A ver. Yeah, a ver, a ver, te voy a dar otra mejor. Eh. Yeah. Este sonido es el sonido, ¿ok? Sonido. Hay veces que va a variar, hay veces que va, de, que va a ser lo siguiente, por ejemplo, te voy a poner acá esto. ¿Por qué digo que son sonidos? Porque gráficamente sí son consonantes, una T y una H. En español la entendemos así, pero con los fonemas es un poco distinto. Cuando está en primera posición, el sonido es, es un sonido que es fricativo, quiere decir que pasa, pasa aire, ¿sí? Entonces me dice ser thought. Thought. Parte de ahí del thought. Lo mismo acá, through. Y lo mismo acá, thanks. Entonces como un como con una Z intermediaria, ¿no? Mm. Yo diría que lo que hay que hacer para hacerlo bacán es sacar la lengua, ponerla entre los dientes y hacer el sonido. Aunque muy rico lo que ah, sea. Ah, ya, ya entiendo, ahora sí. ¿No? Ahí la lengua juega gran parte porque está, está cerrando y dejando pasar la justa cantidad de aire. Entonces, claro, sería thought through think. Lo que pasa con esta, que es distinta, es cuando está al medio, toma un sonido de, 
suena como, como Damián, suena como una D, un poco más suave, es mother, the. ya no es, no puedo decir mother, ¿cachai? Es mother. Entonces, la TH no se, no se enrea, no siempre suena igual, depende de su posición. Si está al medio, es una da, 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 como Diego, casi de. Cuando está primero es un sonido silencioso, como. ¿Ok? Buena pregunta. Este es un sonido que no es tan fácil. Estoy muy de acuerdo. Ah, y ahora sí entendí, profe. Gracias. Ok, ok. Ya. Yeah. Escribe eh, el Ya nos vamos a ir a los diptongos para ir terminando. Eh, so, these sounds were warm, worst, thirsty, dirty. Earth. Todo el sonido tiene uh, que es esta, este fonema. Teacher, ¿qué significa la 7? Uh, ah, está mal escrita. Crima. Ah. <risa> ya. Yeah. Faltó café ahí. <risa> ok. Eh, bueno. <risa> tip songs, tip songs. Deep songs, los de tongo que me encantan. Uh, we have eight deep songs and this is sounds like IE. Ok, like IE. Like IE. IE. Y dice que es flat, es plano porque la lengua está plana en la boca. Yeah? IE. So we have, for example, the word IE. Beer. Beard. Aquí tiene una B al final, entonces hay que hacerla. Beard, para que no se confunda con la de arriba. Uh, here. Son iguales, son dos eh, homófonos. And tear. Again, pretty similar British pronunciation. We know the American is ear and beer and beard and here and dear. Uh, British, here, beer, beard, here and dear. Uh, let's, go, let's have a look. Master Sevalos, can you try this one? Ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, Can you try this? Uh, okay, okay. I was doing one, two, okay. Ear, beer, beer, hear. No, I said that wrong. Okay, don't care. Dear. Uh -huh, okay, yes. So, it takes like a dia, no? Dia. 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 Como día, y uh, British English should be erasing the R, because British is not erotic, okay? Um, let's Damn, see. British. This? Okay, can you see this, this one uh, once more, Sabalos? Beer. Uh -huh. Fernandita? Fernandita? No está. Ay, perdón, Ichel, me distraje. ¿Cuál? This one. Ia. Ajá. And Dania? Pia. Dania? No está. Ya. Yeah. Ok. Ya yeah, viene el tiempo, así que vamos a ir terminando. So we have the Stephen Dip songs. I'm just going to say them because this is the homework. So this one is air, okay, air, air. La lengua otra vez está flat, and the mouth is a bit more open. So air, bear, care, share, fair, there, where, hair, air. Sonido air, air, sonido air. Uh, American, air, bear, care, share, fair. There, where, hair. Okay, that's the difference. And, okay, what you need to do now? I mean, you're going to have time for this. But don't just read in the classroom. Okay. Uh, I need you guys to record yourselves. Okay, un audio. Record yourselves saying all the words from the list. Okay, so I'm going to upload this to the Google Classroom. So please record yourself saying all the words that we did before. Uh, using the British pronunciation, and then also to finish these four sentences, okay? These four sentences. 
everything in one audio recording and I'm gonna put the homework today I think so as an example I'm gonna give you this one I say your beard is in my beard the girl in class has dark hair the worst bear in the world take care of the bear over there do that record with your phone all of these ones Record this one. I mean, all of this one. Okay, todo está acá. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, credits to Papa Teach Me English. Okay, uh, very good YouTube channel to practice pronunciation. Uh, record this ones. This ones. I mean, use this list. Okay, use this list. Record it in an audio, and also add these four sentences. Okay, Doki. Yeah, teacher. Yeah, and comments. Demasiada información. Una clase diferente, muy diferente a los demás. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, but it's really different. That's true. Bacán, Lidia. Sorry, what? Sí, profe, estuvo buena lo de la pronunciación. Sí, a mí, yo digo lo mismo que la catarro, profe. Vamos a seguir, o sea, lo que nos sigue después es, vamos a ver, eh, esta mitad de los contenidos. Eh, Buenas tardes, profe. Hey, Omar. Eh, acentos regionales, ok, regional accents. Eh, hay unos que son muy divertidos y son muy extraños. Uh, also, American and British pronunciation differences. Y connected speech. Y connected speech es finalmente lo que da la fluidez. Y ahí van a descubrir cosas maravillosas. Espero, ok. All right, people, it was a pleasure. I'm going to upload this video today for the people who are not here, for you, Omar, for example. So you can check on the homework and check all the things that we did in class today. I'll see you in two more weeks, I think. So I'm going to post the homework and I'll give you a time limit for it. It was a pleasure to see you, people. Thank you for all the respect and participation. I'll see you around. Gracias, profe. Gracias, profe. Gracias, profe. Pregunta. Pregunta. More. ¿Se pronuncia more o es sin la R? ¿Qué es así? No sé. Como estamos viendo pronunciación británica, debes ser sin la R y con una O profunda, así como O, así como more. more. Sería como more. Ay, qué difícil. Ya. Yeah. Sí, un poco más profunda. Así como, mo. Mo. Ah, sí. Ahí no sé decirlo. Ya. Yeah. Gracias, profe. Sí, ok. Ok. Chao, profe. Bye, Francisca Paz. Bye, Gerard Pantalón. Gracias, Valín. Bye, bye.